Hi, this is Nephropocus. In this video, I'm going to show you how to orient yourself to the basic cardiac views using 3D printed cardiac models. So first, let's talk about the image orientation principles. Here is the ultrasound transducer. And imagine this is the beam coming out of the ultrasound transducer. And every transducer has an orientation marker. You can call that a probe marker. And here you have the screen orientation marker which you can call the screen indicator. Both these things always correspond to each other. What it means is, say for example, if I'm obtaining the image of the kidney with the orientation marker of the probe towards patient's head, part of the kidney that is towards the patient's head, that is the upper pole of the kidney, is depicted on the portion of the screen that is towards the probe orientation marker. So upper pole of the kidney will be here and the lower pole of the kidney will be here. And this principle won't change whether you are in abdomen preset or cardiac preset. What changes is in the abdomen preset, this orientation marker on the screen is towards your left side, but it still corresponds to probe orientation marker. On the other hand, when you choose the cardiac preset, this orientation marker towards uh, goes towards the right side of the screen. Again, it still corresponds to the probe orientation marker. Now, let's take a closer look at the heart. Here we have the big pumping chamber, the left ventricle. Here we have the right ventricle. Right ventricle actually wraps around the left ventricle and comes slightly anterior to the left ventricle. So this portion of the right ventricle that opens into the pulmonary artery is the right ventricular outflow tract. And this chamber here connected to the right ventricle is the right atrium. And you can see the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava are going into the right atrium. And again, when you come to the left side, this chamber here connected to the left ventricle is the left atrium. And here you can see the four pulmonary veins are joining the left atrium. And the left ventricle opens into the aorta. And note that aorta is posterior to the right ventricular outflow tract. That relationship is important when you are assessing the cardiac views. To understand the anatomic orientation of the echocardiographic views, it's important to appreciate how the heart is aligned in the human body. So here is a long axis view of the human body, which is vertical. However, the long axis of the heart is aligned obliquely in relation to the long axis of the body. So if you are slicing the heart in its long axis, you would hold the transducer obliquely. And if you rotate the transducer 90 degrees, then you will slice the heart in its short axis or the transverse plane. Similarly, if you want to slice the heart in its coronal plane, you go to the apex and slice it like this. So Basically, the point is that the axis of the heart are different than the traditional imaging planes of the body. To obtain a parasternal long axis view of the heart, you place the transducer in the third or fourth intercostal space with the orientation marker towards patient's right shoulder. We are doing that because the long axis view of the heart is oblique in relation to the long axis view of the body. And the beam goes from anterior to posterior. When doing that, you already know the orientation principle that structures that are closer to the transducer will be depicted on the top of the image and the structures that are farther from the transducer are depicted at the bottom of the image. So when the beam goes like this, you, you slice the heart in its long axis and this is what you will see on the ultrasound screen. Let's try to identify different structures seen on the parasternal long axis view. The anterior most structure is the structure which the beam is encountering first when it is going from anterior to posterior direction, which is the right ventricular outflow tract. And this big chamber here, posterior to the right ventricular outflow tract, is the left ventricle. And the chamber which is posterior in, the, in terms of beam orientation and that opens into the left ventricle is the left atrium. And the valve in between the left atrium and left ventricle is the mitral valve. So here you have the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve and posterior leaflet of the mitral valve. So the blood goes from the left atrium to the left ventricle like this and again goes back up and through the left ventricular outflow tract goes into this chamber which is the aorta. And the valve here is the aortic valve. So you have right ventricular outflow tract, left ventricle, left atrium, mitral valve, aortic valve and aorta. On a typical parasternal long axis view, the beam wouldn't really go through the apex of the heart. So the beam would stop somewhere like this. That way you don't see the cardiac apex and you don't see 
this arch of the aorta. But you would see the descending aorta which is represented as a circle here when you slice it in its oblique or transverse plane. To get a long axis view of the heart, your beam was aligning obliquely with the orientation marker towards patient's right shoulder. Now, if you want to slice the heart in its short axis, you just rotate the transducer clockwise such that the orientation marker is towards the patient's left shoulder and the beam still goes from anterior to posterior. Now, you cut the heart like this and you will see an image which is similar to this. Let us identify the structures that you would see on the parasternal short axis view. This round chamber here is the left ventricle and the semilunar chamber here is the right ventricle. These two blebs are papillary muscles when the beam is slicing from anterior to posterior um, in the mid ventricular level. So, this is the anterolateral papillary muscle, this is the posteromedial papillary muscle. From the same intercostal space, if you tilt the transducer slightly superior, you would see the structure that you are seeing in the middle of the left ventricle here, which is uh, the mitral valve. You would clearly see the anterior and posterior leaflets of the mitral valve. Uh, if you tilt the transducer superiorly. To get the apical four chamber view, you would slice the heart in its coronal plane. To do that, you start at the parasternal short axis view level, where your orientation marker is towards patient's left shoulder. You just slide the transducer inferiorly and laterally till you go to the cardiac apex. From there, you gently rotate the transducer such that the orientation marker is still towards the patient's left, but 2 to 3 o'clock position. And then look upwards and you would slice the heart in its coronal plane like that. As the beam was going from the ventricles towards the atria, ventricles are represented on the top of the screen. And because your probe orientation marker was towards the patient's left, the left sided chambers will be on the side of the screen indicator. So, here is the left ventricle, left atrium that opens into the left ventricle, and here you have the mitral valve, and this one is the right ventricle and right atrium, and the valve in between right atrium and right ventricle is the tricuspid valve. Normally, the left ventricle occupies about two thirds of the image, and the right ventricle occupies about one third of the image. So, this is the apical four chamber view orientation. And from there, if you want to see the left ventricular outflow tract and the aortic valve, that way you can measure the stroke volume. So, you want to see the aorta here. So, aorta is a little bit anterior from this plane. So, you simply stay in the same intercostal space, but tilt the transducer anteriorly, that is towards yourself. So, previously you are here and then tilt anteriorly, then you would see the aorta. Then you will get a view which is very similar to the apical four chamber view uh, with the left ventricle here, left atrium, right ventricle, right atrium. But in addition, you will get a fifth chamber in the middle, which is nothing but the left ventricular outflow tract and the aorta. So, left ventricular out outflow tract opens to the aorta, and in the middle, you have um, the aortic valve. Now, let us get the subzoifoid four chamber view of the heart. This is also the coronal slice of the heart, but instead of placing the transducer in the uh, at the cardiac apex, you would slice the heart from the abdomen, that is from the xiphoid window. So, when the beam is going from the abdomen into the chest, you would angle the transducer slightly upwards towards the patient's head and the beam will slice the heart like this. And the first structure that the beam comes into contact with here would be the liver. So, you will see liver on top of the image and essentially the image is very similar to that of apical four chamber view, but it is a tilted version. And here is the liver and the structures that are closer to the liver are right sided chambers. Here is the right ventricle, right atrium, tricuspid valve and here is the left ventricle, left atrium, mitral valve. From the subzoifoid four chamber view, 
If you rotate the transducer counterclockwise such that your probe orientation marker is towards the patient's head, you will slice the inferior vena cava in its long axis.